Wow, this is cruel. I love it. You found the best place, for your vengeful needs. This episode gets kicked off by a man, who cheats on his pregnant girlfriend. When she's in surgery, he forged his girlfriend's signature on paperwork, to name their baby a name that she had been avidly against from the beginning. When caught, he gets cursed for life, and won't be able to forget about her. Followed by a story about a daughter, who caught her cheating stepmom in the act of an entanglement. She took it personal, and made sure to dismantle her life, piece by piece. Lastly, a cheating boyfriend tries to go on vacation with his new lover, but the girl he left stranded, seems to have clipped his wings. Before we start, give the like button a mixtape of its favorite songs, but make sure every song is a chipmunk version. Viewer discretion is advised. These revenge stories, might be disturbingly cruel to cheaters. Kinda my revenge, kinda my sisters, but both of us really proud. When I was 14 and my oldest sister, Sarah, was 22 we found out that she was pregnant with Paul, her boyfriend of 4 years. They immediately got engaged and they were really happy. For a time though. Sarah had a horrible pregnancy and about 16 to 18 weeks in, the wonder of creating a human life evaporated within her. She developed hyperemesis, which if you don't know, is really bad morning sickness. She was constantly in pain, she developed gestational diabetes, and just all around hated the experience. Around this time Paul, the then fiancé, started getting sick of the complaining. I believe the argument was, your body is built to do this, it can't be that bad. Sarah was due around Valentine's Day and Paul's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Doe, were very excited. Both about the grandkid and the fact that he could be born on a holiday. She was very against that and really hoped that her son wouldn't be born on a holiday, even one as small as Valentine's Day. Her birthday falls on Easter sometimes and she doesn't like it, because it might make him feel that his day isn't very much about him. Well, Mrs. Doe says something like, Well, if you name him Valentine or Valentino, then that'll make the day even more special to him. Again, sister hated the idea. She thought it was tacky, he'd be bullied for it, and just really didn't like the name Valentino. Paul loved it, but agreed to go with a more average name like Daniel or Jared. Fast forward to February, and she was ready to get this over with. Sarah had officially been put on bed rest because while standing or walking, her blood pressure took unexpected spikes and dips. I look back now and goodness do I feel bad for her. She was doing her best to avoid giving birth on Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, births happen when they happen and that baby was going to come on Valentine's Day, whether she wanted him to or not. I remember waiting out in the waiting room, with my dad, brothers, and Paul, who couldn't stand to be in the delivery room because it was gross. This made me so mad, as he was allowed to go in but simply wouldn't because he thought my sister was gross while giving birth, whereas I had to stay outside, because I was too young to go in with my mom and other sister. Dad went home with the youngest two brothers while the oldest, Zeke, stayed to watch me, because I refused to leave. 16 hours after Sarah went into labor, my little nephew was officially part of the family on the evening of Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, Sarah was not okay. She had to have an emergency cesarean section and while doing the operation, the doctors discovered that the back of her uterus, facing her spinal cord, had a very large and very severe non-cancerous tumor. When I say large, I mean it was twice the size of a standard uterus. The doctors were shocked, and didn't understand why nobody had noticed it on an ultrasound. It accounted for her severe back pain and blood pressure issues. The doctors immediately went in for another surgery to remove the tumor, but sadly ended up having to perform a full hysterectomy. This meant that my nephew would be Sarah's only child. Now while Sarah was in for surgery, Paul was taking care of everything baby-related, to make sure his son was okay. In my 14-year-old self's memory, I remember him being suitably distraught, but I didn't really pay him much mind and spent my time in the waiting room with my mother and other sister. Zeke, however, wanted to be a good future brother-in-law and make sure that Paul was okay. He found Paul filling out the baby's paperwork on his own. While looking, in my brother's words, like he had not a single worry in his mind. Zeke asked why Paul didn't wait for Sarah to fill out the paperwork, as she should have been put of surgery within the hour, and Paul said that he just wanted her to get her rest and heal. That checked out with Zeke, as he was 16 and didn't know any better at the time. Now I know what you're probably thinking. No, he wouldn't. He knows how much she hates that name. And still, 
she'd need to sign the paperwork too. My fellow vengeful listeners, I regret to inform you, that Paul forged Sarah's signature on the paperwork, and waited until she was out of surgery to hand said paperwork over. My sweet nephew that was born on Valentine's Day, was named Valentino, on his first official birth certificate. I still to this day don't know, why Paul and his family were so insistent about the name. He had even picked out a different one with my sister. And before you ask, no, he was never brought up on forgery charges because his parents were witnesses to her signing the papers, even though they only got there at the last minute. So Sarah dumped him and got her son's name changed a month later. She was willing to split custody with him because that's her son's father and she wants the kid to know him, but Paul vanished and she never heard anything back, which seemed weirdly out of character to us. Until a mutual friend was tagged on Facebook, in his wedding pictures six months later. Paul had apparently started cheating on her not long after she got pregnant. Sarah was livid, but there wasn't much she could do so she filed for child support, and continued to live her best life. Until six years later. My friends, this is where the revenge starts. So Sarah has been a single mother for the past six years and has been amazing at it. At this point in my career, I've been a hairdresser for about eight months at our local Great Clips. I'm working one day, and guess who takes a seat before me, it's Jane, Paul's wife. I take her back for a trim and she clearly has no idea who I am. That adds up because a mutual friend that still keeps in contact with Paul, said that Jane doesn't know a thing. She has no idea about Sarah, that she was the other woman, or that Paul actually has a kid that he's been, infrequently, paying child support for. She's in the dark on it all. I told myself not to be an ass and treat her like a normal customer, which I did. Now at this point, Jane was heavily pregnant, so a lot of our conversation was about that. She loved being pregnant but it was hard, her husband was so unsympathetic, big shocker, and she was due in 10 weeks and they still hadn't picked out a name for their baby girl. Ladies and gentle peoples, this was my chance. I asked what kind of name she was looking for and she said, I want something unique and unusual, but not ridiculous like brain telege. Paul had suggested so many already, and she didn't like any of them. So I, conniving little weasel I am, said, What about? Sarah. My sister's name isn't actually Sarah, she was named after an older family member that passed not long after she was born but there was no female equivalent for his name, so our parents created one. It's a beautiful name and just what Jane was looking for. She loved it, she stuck by it, and I found out by stalking her Facebook months later, that she had put her foot down about it and that was their daughter's name. Now Paul has a daughter with his ex's name, to remind him every day about her, and to also remind him to pay his child support. Little nephew is 10 years old now with a new name and no contact with his biological father, though we do still sometimes call him Val as a family nickname. He likes it but doesn't want to bring it to school, so it's staying a family nickname. Sarah pretends to hate when we call him that, in a joking way. As long as he likes it she doesn't have a problem with it. And she's seeing a new guy who's really great and like a father to Val. This story is told from a female perspective. I really didn't think I'd ever have material to share here, so I'm a little excited. A little over a week ago, my husband and I were going there to go swimming, that's all. The local pool is always overcrowded this time of the year, so we figured we'd just go to one of the four hotels with pools. This hotel has the nicest one and it's indoors. There are glass windows that surround it and you can enter from one of two areas, the lobby or room hallway. You can pretty much see most of the pool area from the large open area. Anyway, we were about to enter when we see someone we know. We caught my dad's skanky wife, at a hotel pool with a man I'll call steroid douche or SD for short. Guess what they were doing? Hint, not swimming. I knew the douche, she and SD had some history. About a year ago she left my dad for SD. This was just a mere six months after my father married her. SD knew she was married, he was even friends with my dad before his wife left him the first time for SD. So my dad let her go and started the divorce stuff. Unfortunately, she came crawling back to him before the divorce could happen. She claimed SD beat her, SD doesn't love her, she made a mistake. So my dumb dumb dad takes her back. Now here she is, only 4 months later, playing tonsil hockey with SD at a hotel pool, when she should be at her office working. She didn't see my husband and I. We were just lucky they weren't exactly facing the entrance we were at. Plus it's hard to notice others when you're sucking face. 
we were able to back up a bit and take a couple picks through the very large windows, and slipped out of there. I'm not going to lie. I was super pissed. I will note the picks aren't the best but they are identifiable. I was going to send the picks off to my dad right then and there. However, Hobby and I decided that there was more that could and should be done. Now I'll try to keep this brief, but there's something I need to add. My dad has supported this woman and her children for years, and she is not a cheap woman to have around. She has only very recently gotten herself a job. A very nice one in fact. She is actually in the process of owning about one third of the business. My sisters and I have speculated that this recent success, might be because of extramarital activities with the fairly wealthy recently divorced business owner, who spontaneously took my dad's wife under his wing. I'll call the business owner B.O. Now I had no proof that she was cheating on my dad with B.O., only with S.D. However, I figured it wouldn't hurt to reach out to B.O. with my findings to see how he would react. Since she was supposed to be at work, she must have called off. So I called her office. Hi, I'm calling about, skanky wife, is B.O. there? I should mention, my dad's wife pretended to be a loving stepmom, she's not. That also meant pretending to have a hard but endearing relationship with me. In fact, her office is plastered in pics from Facebook of myself and family. So people in her office know who I am and didn't have any issue with transferring me to B.O. Hey, is everything okay with, skanky wife? Well kind of, it depends. How close are you really with my dad's wife? Ex excuse me? He totally stammered. Never mind. Look I'm going to be straight with you. Skanky wife, is out with SD, when she should be there working. Silence. I disrupt the uneasy silence with a, hello? Why should I believe you? All you've done is lie about her? This reminds me, my dad's wife is a permanent victim everywhere she goes. I'll send you some pics I took. What's your email? I send the pics and get no response. I decide to call SD's gym, which is also my gym. There's been a pretty awful rumor going around about SD. Apparently he's been selling steroids to fellow gym members. So I told them SD tried to sell me steroids there last week, this was a lie. I told them I didn't feel safe going there anymore, so I'd like to cancel my membership. They asked if I was going to go to the police and file a report, I told them no, because SD was prone to anger and I didn't want to risk retaliation. They understood. Membership cancelled. I know this seems irrelevant, but this gym takes these kind of things seriously, especially when a complaint results in an end of a membership. At the very least they will be looking to cancel his membership too. After this all, I finally send my dad the pics I took of his wife, with a long drawn out message about support and love and whatnot. Now to the good part. It's been a week since I saw what I saw and did what I did. Here are the results of my half-assed sabotage. Skanky wifey lost her job, and any chance at being a co-owner. B.O. trashed her crap in the office and actually made a huge scene. Which led to a pretty nasty and heavily detailed review on a local Facebook rant page, from a customer that was in the establishment. Our town is pretty small, so a review like that can be a bit damaging, and because of the contents, it really hurt skanky wife's image. Someone even shared a story, about her husband having an affair with my dad's wife, three years ago at her last job. Wouldn't you know it, SD had rented out a locker at the gym. Since the waiver you signed to rent a locker allows the gym to open your locker whenever they feel necessary, SD ended up getting his locker searched. What they found in the locker according to the police blotter, was a freaking unregistered handgun. So poor SD is going to prison probably. Nice, a seriously great way to bullshit myself into a win. Did I mention he's a felon? You can guess how that worked out for him. Bye bye. My dad's wife is now living in a hotel. Between the pics, B.O. firing her and then SD being sent away, my dad threw her ass out. She is super upset about SD. Hysterical to be more precise. She did give me a call. I let it go to voicemail. I couldn't really make out what she said, but between the shrieks and sobbing, I caught A. I'm going to kill you, you ruined my life. I might get a restraining order but I'm not sure yet. I'm kinda giddy about this. She refuses to come see her kids who are still living with my dad. My dad is being civil and trying to keep everything super calm for them. She doesn't seem to care about my dad or the kids at all though. He adopted the kids, and one is my actual half-sister. They are good kids, and I would never go out of my way to hurt them. I'm making sure you all know they are in a good place. 
none of them are older than 10 years, so a lot of what's going on right now is being kept from them. My dad loves them and so do I. I also wouldn't tell them the truth about their awful mom. That's not my place. My dad will hopefully start being happier. The following story is told from a female perspective. My ex and I used to go to a Cancun resort every year, with a bunch of our mutual friends. I found out my ex was cheating on me, when I accidentally got a flight confirmation email, for tickets he booked for himself and the other girl. It was rough. Tried to have a civil breakup, but he refused to pay me for the Cancun vacation that I had already paid for. I tried to get my money back from him, but he refused. After our breakup, it took me several weeks to find a new place to live and move my things out of his house. On the last trip to the house, I asked him one last time for the money, and he refused again. So I accidentally packed his current passport in my last box of things, and left my expired passport in its place. Since he already booked the tickets, he apparently didn't check the passport, until he was at the airport and was denied the international flight, because he didn't have a current passport. I never got my money back, but I did get immense satisfaction that he didn't get to go on vacation last minute. I gave the passport back a couple weeks later, when I discovered it in a box of things to unpack. So weird, right? He asked for a refund for the flights and I told him I would be happy too, if he refunded me for the resort, which was much more expensive. He declined. These are the similar short stories from commenters. After my ex gave me a day to pack and move out. He and his cheating partner, who was a friend of mine, had been cheating with each other and started gaslighting me. I tried to end things, tried to move out. He convinced me to stay, and he wasn't really cheating. It was my mental illness making me paranoid and feel this way. So I stayed a bit longer in false hope, until he decided he wanted to go steady with the next person and he'd eventually leave for his next prey. I found his stash of Troy silver ounces in my things a while after I'd moved out and moved on. He had hidden them in my things, because he had a lot of government paranoia and thought silver would never lose value. Which is fair, but why stash your values in the property of the person you're cheating on and gaslighting? On top of him making me move out with such short notice, he always took his valuables and stole some of my electronics. The ounces ended up selling for more than he stole from me, so I think it evens out? Maybe it was a guilt thing leaving them. <laughs> Similar story here. Cheating ex-wife had a new boyfriend within a night after I left her. Now, because we'd never been on holiday abroad, no money, and two young kids, when she got her new passport, she put it in her maiden name. She paid for the trip with her credit card, while refusing to pay me child support, the children lived with me. She went to pick the tickets up at the airport, and was refused, as the name didn't match the credit card that they were bought with. So, instead of Oslo, they ended up going to Skegness, we're based in the UK. I know that when she found out, she kicked off so bad she was almost ejected from the airport. I did something similar to my ex many years ago. Same problem, she was cheating. Her and the new fella were going to go on a group holiday to Tenerife we had booked previously. She planned on just paying to change the name on the booking when they got to the airport. However, I used my insurance to cancel my flight. A few weeks later I got a phone call at 3 AM. I didn't pick up, but the voicemail was pretty fun to listen to. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe to receive future episodes, and tickle the like button for good karma. Do you have any experiences surrounding this topic? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.